Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to be coding this password generator website. So here you can see we have a slider to select the password length. By default, it is eight, and I can set a password of any length up to 32. And I can select whether to have lowercase letters, uppercase numbers or symbols, and then I click generate. And every time I click generate, we get a different password each time. And I can get rid of numbers. And you can see our password will have no numbers. And I can also click on this copy button and this alert will appear saying we've copied the password and then I can just paste it in a notepad like so. Okay, so that's what we'll be coding today. All right, so very quickly before we begin coding, I just want to mention that I'm working on this new tutorial series where we code website projects using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can find all the tutorials on my channel as well as on kennyipcoding.com. So currently we have this calculator project, which is a copy of the iPhone calculator, and we have this interest rate calculator. And for this tutorial, we have this password generator, and then the next one will have a flashcards study website. And you can find the list of tutorials on my YouTube channel as well as on kennyipcoding.com. So if you want to stay up to date on new tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's begin. I've created three files, index.html, style.css, and password underscore generator.js. So the style sheet is empty and the JavaScript file is also empty. And for the index.html file, we've created a title, so password generator, and we have a link to the style sheet and a script tag that will link our JavaScript file. All right, so what we need to do is just double click on the index.html file, and you can see we have a blank HTML page. All right, so first I'm going to create a div and give it an ID of password dash generator. So all of our buttons and option selections will be placed inside this div. And let's create another div and we'll have ID password. So this is going to be for the password output as well as the copy button. So here I'm going to do input type text. ID is going to be result. And for value, I'll just make it by default the word password. So this is going to create an input type of text. And this is where we're going to populate the generated password. So by default, the text is going to be password, but we're going to change this value every time the user clicks on the generate button. And in this case, I'm going to make it read only. Next, we need to create a button tag. So we're going to set an ID of copy button, and then we'll make the text copy. All right, now if I refresh the page, you can see we have an input box with the word password as the default value, and we have a button that says copy. Now the next thing we need to do is add a slider for determining the password length. So I'm going to create a label for password length, and the text is going to be password length colon. Next, we need to create a slider or a range. So I'm going to create an input Type is going to be range, min is going to be eight, max will be 32. So this is going to be the minimum number and the maximum number. So we want the password length to be between eight and 32. And I'm going to set a default value of the minimum value. So just eight. And the name is going to be password length. And let's also set an ID. So we'll make the ID the same as the name. So password length. And we want to show the user what number the slider is on. So I'm going to create an output tag here. And by default, I'll set it to eight because the value here by default is eight. So the output would be eight. And we want to update this output tag value every time the user moves the slider. So here I'm just going to add on input this dot next element sibling dot value is going to be this dot value. So what does this mean? So on input, if we move the slider around, that is an input and this dot next element sibling is going to be next tag after this one. So this is going to be the output tag and we're setting the value, which is this eight to be this dot value. So this refers to the input tag. So it's referring to itself and value is going to be value over here. All right, so now if I refresh the page, you can see we have a slider and the password length is eight. And if I move it around, you can see it updates the number. All right, so now we have the slider. Next, we need to add some options for which characters the user wants in the password. So here I'm going to create a div tag and set an ID of options 
and we're going to create four labels. So label, and I'm going to set an input type is going to be check box and ID is going to be lowercase option. So here we're going to use the ID to identify whether the checkbox was checked or not. And we also need to add some text to the checkbox. So let's create a span and I'm just going to do lower a dash Z. All right. Now if I refresh the page, you can see we have our first checkbox over here and the text is lower a dash Z. Now we need to repeat this for the other three options. So label input type checkbox ID is going to be uppercase option and span upper a dash Z in uppercase label input type is going to be checkbox again. ID is going to be number options and then span. We'll call this number. So this is zero to nine. And then finally, we have input type checkbox. ID is going to be special option. So this is for the special characters. Span is going to be symbol. And I'll just use a couple of examples here. So exclamation mark at symbol dollar sign hash and percentage. Now, if I refresh the page, you can see we have four options now and I can select between these options. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to set one of them by default checked because when I refresh, we have nothing checked. So for that, I'll just do checked and we'll make lowercase checked. All right. Now, if I refresh the page, you can see the lowercase is checked. Finally, we need to add one more thing and that is the button for generating the password. So on the bottom, I will add a button tag with an ID of generate button. And here I'll just make the text generate. All right, now let's refresh the page and you can see we have our generate button. All right, so that's all the HTML that we'll need. Now let's style this up. So the first thing I'm going to style is the outermost div, which is this password generator. So this is going to have all the elements inside it. So let's do password generator. So by using the hash symbol, we can style a specific tag based on the ID. And here I'm going to make the background color white smoke and let's add a border five pixels, solid light gray. Let's set the width to be 500 pixels, height to be 250 pixels, and let's add some padding, 10 pixels. And I also want to add a border radius so that I can round out the edges of the rectangle. So I'm going to do border radius and set it to 25 pixels. All right, now if I refresh the page, you can see we have a rectangle here with rounded edges and the background color is white smoke and the border is light gray and the width is 500 pixels and height is 250 pixels. All right, now let's style everything within this rectangle. So let's start with the first element here, which is the input box and the copy button. So both of these elements are inside this password div tag. So here we'll style up password. And I'm going to make it display as grid and grid template columns. We'll do auto min content. All right, so now let's refresh the page. And as you can see, the password input box takes up most of the space. And that is because of the auto min content. This button doesn't take up that much space. All right, now let's style each individual component. So let's start with the input. So result, we'll set a padding of 10 pixels. We'll set the background color to be light gray. Font size will be 2EM. And let's remove the border and the outline. So the background is going to be light gray and we're going to make the font bigger. And we want to remove this border and this outline when I click on this text. So let's refresh. And as you can see, the background's gray and we no longer have the border nor the outline. Now let's style this copy button. So for the copy button, we're going to make the background color light sea green and the color of the font is going to be white. We'll add some padding, 10 pixels. And just like with the input box, we're going to remove the border. And when we hover our mouse over the button, 
we want to set the cursor to be pointer. So that is going to be the hand finger pointer. All right, so let's refresh the page. And you can see if I hover over this button, the mouse cursor changes to the pointer. Now I want to update this entire component and make this have rounded edges just like with the password generator box. So up here in the password styling, I'm going to do border radius and make it 10 pixels. And overflow is going to be hidden. So this is for if we generate a really long password, the text is going to go outside the text box. I want it to stay within. So we're going to make overflow hidden. All right, now let's refresh the page. And you can see the edges are now rounded. So now let's style up the rest of these components. All right, so for the password length, which is the slider, I'm just going to make the width 90%. So this is going to be 90% of the parent container. So the parent is going to be this password generator. So it's going to be 90% of this width. All right, so let's refresh the page. And you can see the password length is now 90% of the width. Now let's style up these options. So we have these four options and I want to style them all within this div tag. So options, and I'm going to display it as a grid and we'll do grid template columns repeat two and one fractional unit. So this means we're going to organize the options into two columns. So each row will be two columns. And since we have four in total, this will create a grid of two by two. And let's add a gap between each option and make it 10 pixels. All right, now if I refresh the page, you can see we've organized these options into two columns. Now let's style up each option box. So inside our options tag, we have four labels and we want to style each one. So we're going to do options. So this is options tag and we'll do label. So this means that we're going to apply this style for all the label tags inside this options div tag. So I'm going to do display block. We'll set the background color to be light gray. Add some padding, 10 pixels. And let's round out the edges. So border radius is also going to be 10 pixels. And just like with a copy button, when the user hovers the mouse over an option, we want to change the mouse cursor. So cursor will be pointer. And that's all we need for the label. All right, so now if I refresh the page, you can see we've styled up each option. All right, so now we need to style up the generate button. So over here, let's do generate button. We'll set the background color to be light sea green. The font color is going to be white, border none border radius of 10 pixels. So it's pretty much going to have similar styling to the copy button. So let's see what we have so far. All right, now let's refresh the page. And you can see we have the generate button over here and it's sticking too close to these options. So I'm going to add some margin and let's also change the width and height. And just like with the copy button, we want to change the cursor. So let's add some margin top and we'll push the button down from the top by 10 pixels. Width is going to be 175 pixels. Height is going to be 50 pixels. Font size is going to be 1 EM and cursor is going to be pointer. All right, now let's refresh the page and you can see we have the generate button over here. And currently all the elements are positioned to the left. I want to center everything. So in the password generator, I will do text align center. All right, now let's refresh the page and you can see everything is now centered. Now I want to center the password generator to the center of our web page and add some background color. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to set a background color of light sea green. Font family is going to be Arial. And let's center the password generator. So display flex, justify content will be center. Align items will be center. And I'll set the height to be 100 of the viewport height and overflow will be hidden. All right, now let's refresh the page. And you can see we set a background color of light sea green and this password generator is now at the center of our page. All right, so we've styled everything up and let's add some functionality for when we click on this generate button. All right, so the first thing we need to do is define all the possible characters. So I'll do const lowercase and this is just going to be a string of all the alphabet characters. So let's type them all out in lowercase. All right, so it looks like we don't have any typos. Let's do the same for uppercase.
Next, we need to list out all the numbers. So we'll do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we have symbols. So for this one, I'll just put the symbols that are commonly used for passwords. So feel free to add whatever symbols you want here, but I'll just leave it as that. All right, so now we listed out all the values. Now let's get the generate button. And to get the generate button, we can just access this button tag using this ID generate button. So here I'm going to create a variable to reference that tag. So generate button is document dot get element by ID and it's called generate button. And we'll do generate button dot add event listener. So the button is going to listen for a click. And if we click on the button, we'll call a function called generate. And let's also get the result. So const result is going to be the input tag for the password. So we want to populate this input tag with the password that we generate. So we're going to replace this value over here and we can get this tag by using this ID result. So we'll do const result is equal to document dot get element by ID result. All right, now let's create our generate function. And here we're going to check to see which options we selected. So we have four checkboxes and we're going to check each input to see if it's checked. And we're doing this using the ID of each input tag. All right, so what we'll do is we'll combine all the characters. So let characters equal to an empty string and we'll do if document not gets element by ID lowercase option dot checked. If so, we'll do characters plus equal lowercase. And we need to do the same for the other three. So else if document dot get elements by D uppercase option dot checked. We'll do characters plus equal uppercase. Else if document dot get elements by D number option dot checked. We'll do characters plus equal numbers. And then finally, document dot get elements by D special option dot checked. We'll do characters plus equal symbols. All right, so now we know which characters will be in this password. Now we need to figure out the length of the password. So here I'll do const length is going to be number of document dot get elements by D password length dot value. So this is going to be the value of the slider. So we have password length. So it's going to be this input over here, which is password length. And we're going to get this value. And this value is a string. So for that reason, we're converting the string to a number. And now let's construct the password. So I'm going to do let password is equal to an empty string. And we'll do a for loop. So for let i is equal to zero, i less than length, i plus plus const index is equal to math dot floor math dot random times character dot length and then we'll do password plus equal to characters at that index so what are we doing here math dot random returns a number between zero and one and this includes floating point numbers and we're multiplying it by the length of the number of characters possible and because this includes floating point numbers we're going to do math dot floor to round it down and by rounding it down we get rid of any decimal places all right so once we have our password we still need to update the result so result dot value is equal to password all right, now let's refresh the page. Currently we have password length of eight and we have lowercase selected by default so I can generate and I can move the slider and generate a longer password. Now if I click symbols and numbers, hmm, okay. So all the passwords are letters only. So there's probably something wrong with my logic. Ah, okay. So here you can see I have if else if statements. This means that only one of them can be selected. So let's remove the else. So this was my bad. So now without the else, we're checking each condition. All right, let's do this again. So generate. Now let's add some numbers. Okay, uppercase. Nice. And symbols. Okay, and let's change the password length. 
Okay, cool. So we fixed the bug and we can generate passwords of different combinations of letters and numbers and symbols. Now there's one edge case and that is if I untick all these options and I click generate, you can see we get undefined. And that is because if there are no options selected, then the characters would be empty. So let's add a check. If characters is not equal to an empty string, then we'll create the password. All right, so let's refresh and let's generate. Okay, now let's remove everything and generate. And you can see nothing changes. So now the next thing we need to do is add a functionality for the copy button so that it would copy this password to the user's clipboard. That way the user doesn't have to manually highlight this and press control C. So just like with the generate button, we need to get the copy button reference. So const copy button is equal to document dot get element by D copy button and we'll do copy button dot add event listener. It's going to listen for a click and it'll call a function when we click on this button and let's call the function copy password. Now let's define that function over here. Okay, so first we need to get the text. So I'm going to do const copy text is equal to result. So let's get the text field. So copy text dot select. And then let's get the range for the copy text. So copy text dot set selection range. And this will be from index zero to the length of the password. So copy text, which is result dot value dot length. So once we get the text, we need to write it to the clipboard. So navigator dot clipboard dot write text. And we'll do copy text dot value. And once we've copied the password, we should alert the user. So let's create an alert pop up. So alert password copied plus copy text dot value. All right, so let's refresh the page and I'll select all the options and generate. Let's make the password a bit longer. Okay, now let's copy this. And you can see password copied. And I have my notepad here. So I press control V and you can see we have our password here. And let's make it longer. So you can see we have the overflow hidden. So if I scroll this, you can see it's longer than it's actually displaying. So here I can just copy this. And you can see it gives me the whole password and I can just paste it here. And yeah, we can change the selections. So all letters, all numbers, symbols, symbols and numbers, and so on. Okay, so we have a fully functional password generator. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. If you want, you can continue working on this project. So one thing you can do is reference password generators that are out there, for instance, we have easy to say, easy to read, all characters, and we have different options. So you can add these options to the password generator that we've created. And you can change the styling if you want. And you can add additional features such as how many letters or numbers specifically you would like in the password. So for instance, you can have a password length of 32, but maybe you only want three numbers or four symbols. So you can add that as a feature. But uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.